I'm Mars Girl. And I'm Josh Knight the First. And welcome to episode 12 of Mokori Play, the only podcast dedicated solely to all things City Hunter. On today's podcast, we're going to cover episode 12 of City Hunter, titled Kids Have All the Luck, Beautiful Woman from a Dangerous Land. Oh, this is one of our first episodes where uh, we've got people coming in from the country of Fake Land. No, we, not Fake Land. It has a name. This is Amalia. Fake Land. Not Somalia, Amalia. Fake Land. Look, There's lots it's of fake real, land. It's real to somebody, Kaylin. It's real to me. It's real to sunrise. It's real to sunrise. It's real. So we wanted to bring up here that some of these episode titles, now that we're getting further into the series, aren't exactly 100% accurate to what we see on the screen. Well, they're not literal one-for-one -one word translations. Uh, this is just what you do when you adapt. You adapt it so that it makes sense in your local language, but it's not always literally, this word literally means this word down here because that would sound kind of funny. Yeah, but every so often there's a little bit of nuance that you miss when you do that. I mean, maybe a person might change a thing or two here or there, depending on who the translator or who the adapter is, but it's not like they did it wrong. This is what people need to understand. Just because it's not literal doesn't mean it's wrong. But specifically for this episode, the second part of the title, Beautiful Woman from a Dangerous Land, is slightly accurate, but to what the actual Japanese is saying, a more accurate translation translation would have been Dangerous Country's Boner Beauty, since the word Mokuri is used in the title. Okay, yeah, but look, Mokuri already has been pretty difficult for them to work with, and they've already decided the word Mokuri is just Mokuri. But be that as it may, I did want to go ahead and bring that up, just for you guys listening in, since you probably won't hear this information anywhere else. You, you are so much more of a stickler for, well, this is literally what the words say than I am. Like, the localization, I think, is perfectly suitable for for what we've got. Even then, it's still a, it's something worth knowing, I would say. It's fun. It's fun. Okay. So this week, we've got a real fun case for you guys, since we've got a lot of references to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, lots of action film references, which really, Sunrise has taken quite a liking to across the franchise, really. But this is one of the first moments where you really see, no, they were watching Hollywood movies and they were <laughs> trying to insert them into their own thing. And this episode in particular, it's undeniable. They're not even trying to hide it. They directly reference it. So we start our episode this week outside of the Century Royal Hotel. That doesn't really matter. It's just they wrote something in English, so we wrote it down. <laughs> and we see a young boy and his charge, a older woman, not older, but just... She's older than he is. She's older She's than he is. probably just in her 20s. And they are both trying to escape this really Arnold Schwarzenegger looking mofo, you know, dark glasses. They've got him drawn almost exactly like Schwarzenegger Big without getting jaw. into, you know, copyright territory or likeness territory. Yeah, big buff dude, strong jaw, really strong features. They will reference, oh, the Schwarzenegger thing again later. Now, they don't say it overtly right there at the beginning. It's just, if you know what you're looking for, you can see the resemblance. Right. Also, they definitely were showing off that's what they were going for in the last episode preview. They've already shown it off. So if you come in this week, you're like expecting this guy to be the Schwarzenegger guy. So this Schwarzenegger guy, along with a guy who to me looks suspiciously a lot like Charles Bronson and another guy are trying to get a hold of this woman and her little kid that are running away from them. They are cornered into a park where luckily Rio happens to be there to save the day. And Rio's not playing around. No, he shoots Schwarzenegger looking dude in the foot. He's like, you, you better back off, man. And man does not take him seriously, so Rio shoots man in the toe. And, and we see him get shot in the foot. There's there's blood. There's blood. There's he blood. goes down. Rio's like, I, I told you, you guy, I, I told you don't do it, and then you did it. And so F I around shot, and find out. So I shot you in the foot. Hey guys, why don't you get him on out of here? Uh, okay. And his two buddies drag him off out of the park. Like, that's the weird part to me, as though the two of them didn't have guns. Like, well, he shot him. We could shoot back. They could have had a shootout right there. But no, like, they had enough foresight to be like, this guy's serious and he's probably a better shot than we are. We were just counting on the lady and the kid. And, you know, we've got guns and we've got to be better than them. That's all they were counting on. But they weren't counting on their biggest gun, meaning the Schwarzenegger looking guy being handicapped right. by a, a bullet to the foot. Right. So we find out that the kid and the woman are actually our clients for the week. They're 
They're the ones who wrote XYZ on the... On the chalkboard inside the train station. So we are dealing with the young boy, Takuya, and his teacher, Atsuko. Both of them are refugees from the country of Amalia. Fake land. Amalia. Look, and I, I would like to think that fake land is like a, a collection of colonies because we will see many a fake land. Y you know, the way that there are so many British colonies out there in the world. Canada, Australia. Canada's French, though. Canada has a French part. Canada is still technically... Well, Epcot it's... has a French part. Yeah, America has a French part. It's Baton Rouge. I don't understand what you're saying here. What, what is the point you're making? I have no point. So Atsuko and Takuya have escaped from Amalia since we found out that Takuya's father is helping the rebels in that country since right now they're going through a civil war. Well, his father is a journalist and he's got a bunch of information that could hurt the country. And so they figure, hey, if we capture his son, then we'll prevent him from leaking all of this information as a journalist. And at the moment, they are being hunted down by Schwarzenegger guy and Charles Bronson guy and the other third guy who doesn't look like anybody since they are agents of the government. Yes, that is what is happening. So like most episodes, we see that Ryo opts to go ahead and take the case since one, a child is involved, and two, Atsuko is fairly attractive to Ryo. And he opts for them to not stay wherever they were staying there at the Century Royal Hotel. They will stay at his apartment. Of course they will. This happens a lot. But, uh, you know, like, there is a moment where he's taking a look at her and he sees that she's really been taking a beating trying to protect this boy. Unfortunately, he's lifting her skirt to do it. But quite frankly, he's not really getting a peek in a, up her skirt. He's looking at, oh my god, her legs are covered in all these bruises. Now, Cowrie has decided, hey... Don't lift up her skirt, which, you know, she has a point, but honestly, it did not appear to me as though Ryo was coming in looking at her with ill intent at that moment. Clearly, this is to show that Atsuko has been going through basically hell to try and protect Takuya. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, we don't want to get too far ahead without mentioning that when their civil war in Amalia is brought up, there's a bit of television footage that's shown of people protesting in Amalia, and we get a look at some of these amazing signs. So there's, yeah, there's a bunch of protest signs, and they're using Roman letters. So much like English is written in Roman letters. English alphabet. The, the, the English Roman alphabet so much like French and Spanish and most of German, you know, stuff like that. But this is a fictional language that all of these characters from Fake Land are using, okay? Just amazing made-up words. I think my favorite was Bedeft Loe. Or my favorite, the much larger sign there in the crowd, Dobu Mu. D-O-B-U. M-O-O. -O. Like, it's just, there's one there that's just saying oof. O-H-H-H-F. Like, they've just written out Oof. whatever. Oof. Yeah, or heujle. Oofmu. Like, we, out? No, it's eutmu. Like, we can't make out what the hell they were trying to say. Bedeftloe, though, is. <laughs> Dobumu, Kaylin. Dobumu. Bedeftloe. I don't think you're understanding. Like, the, the whole point, the reason why they're having a civil war, they're lying to you when they tell you the civil war is about Dobumu. The civil war is actually about Bedeftloe. Oh, man. Yeah, they didn't the, teach me that in civics class. Yeah, they're going to have to change uh, fake land history books. Oh man, they need to stick that in the curriculum for next semester. Oh, but but see, this is also part of why they're having a civil war, though, is because they're trying to remove uh, critical bedeft Loe theory oh from the history God. books. Oh my this God. This is why there's a civil war, Josh. Wow. <laughs> Just wow. <laughs> I can't even with you right now. So the crux of the episode actually relies on Ryo's relationship with Takuya in that since he's having to protect the both of them, Ryo is acting normally the way he would around mainly any woman with Atsuko, but with Takuya... He's taken kind of a liking to, since Takuya seems to really have taken a liking to Ryo, and starts emulating a lot of his behaviors. As if this wasn't the way the kid already was, though. Quite frankly, like, he's, what, 12? He's yeah. something like 12 years old, and kids are gonna start acting like that at about that age. And so we see that Takuya admits to having a history of already having peeped in on Atsuko, and getting her measurements, and using to his advantage the fact that she still thinks of him as a little kid. Well, 
yeah, to go into the bath. Yeah, she's she's in the bathroom. She's bathing. And he's like, uh, hey, I'm going to go in there. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Come on in. You know, the way that a mother would take their real young kid into the bathroom with them, regardless of whether it's a boy or a girl, right? Uh-huh. Like, at a certain point, a parent typically goes, okay, now don't come into the stall with me anymore. Like, you're a little old for that now. Now it's at the point where it's weird. Or maybe at a certain point, a parent might continue to bathe together with their kid to show the kid, this is how we bathe, blah, blah, blah. No, this kid's too old for that shit. Yeah, way too old. She's way too old for that. But he's getting away with it, and she's letting him. Now, the thing of it is, we see that Takuya, it's not just entirely pervy, thank God. Takuya actually cares a lot about Atsuko, and what he really wants to do is be able to protect her. So, in as much, he asks Ryo to teach him how to use a firearm. Which, cool... Maybe Ryo shouldn't have actually handed over his 357 to, like, a 12-year-old boy. Yeah, like, okay, that was stupid of Ryo, that was, quite honestly. That was real dumb. He was just like, now if you shoot that thing and you get hurt, that's your fault, not mine. No, you're the adult in the room that handed like, you a child a gun. Like, quite honestly, handing a Colt Magnum 357 to a 12-year-old and letting him shoot single-handedly, it should have broken his shoulder. I mean, it might have. It Like, it sends him back flying into the back wall and he's like ah that hurt and Rio's like I told you so and then he's finally like yeah maybe don't fire it one handed dude maybe lead off with that or maybe just don't give him the gun at the very least if you're gonna teach somebody like look if you're gonna use a gun put both hands on it practice trigger discipline maybe don't start with here let's just see what he does with the gun first and then adjust from there (laughs) (laughs) that's the worst idea very bad idea but as such Rio seems seems to be okay with teaching somebody else how to shoot. And we see over the course of the episode, at least for my money, looking at the kind of sort of montage they have of them emulating each other's behavior, that he does manage to give Takuya a smaller gun to train with. Right. Which, okay, good, but still... Maybe, again, if you were gonna give a 12-year-old a gun, maybe don't let it be the Magnum. Now, in between training, we see that Atsuko has gone up to the roof for some air, and Ryo tries to console her as she's very distraught over the whole situation. You know, Takuya's life hanging in the balance, and explaining how she's there to help the rebels. And they are within the scope site of Arnold Schwarzenegger-looking dude, and it's not Ryo's super hearing that saves them when he takes the shot. It's actually Kaori's hammer for well, once. Which, uh, it's a mistake. It's an accident. But it worked. So, like, Ryo, mind you, this whole episode, he never actually assaults the lady that he's doing the job for, okay? She's actually kind of, like, I don't know about into him, but she's accepting of him, especially because he's right. protecting he's their them. only hope. And so they are consentingly holding each other. She's kind of crying against his chest, and Ryo might go in for a kiss, maybe? And then Kaori brings her hammer in as though Ryo has done something wrong, even though he has to really technically not done anything wrong. So the instinct is to be like, Kaori, like, you're getting you're getting too jealous at the moment but had she not come in with the hammer to to hurt him which she did she hurt him but now he's not dead because he didn't get shot the bullet goes right past them because she managed to get his stupid head out of the way on accident but the more amazing thing to me is that Ryo didn't even register that a shot had happened at all that's true because usually he can hear like Oh my god, somebody's over across the street and on the next building with a gun. Which is literally what was happening. Right. But he didn't register it at all this time. Which right. means she probably knocked the f*** out of him. Maybe? What, you think he got hit so hard he didn't hear it? Entirely possible. Oh, oh At gotcha. least this one time. Gotcha. Now, along with his enamorment with Atsuko Sensei, we also see that Takuya actually kind of has a thing for Kaori, too. Because the second half of the episode starts... With him going in for a butt grab, for a boob grab, and she immediately thinks it's Ryo, with fair reason. But it's actually Takuya. She gets him in the face with the frying pan. She hits a she hits a child with a she frying pan. She hit a pan. child. Mind you, uh, the kid shouldn't be grabbing butts. I'm not going to advocate for hitting children, but teach children not to assault people, maybe. Yeah. That's something this kid is, has got to learn. You, you can give a little bit of, of pass to a kid... But only like a little bit, and after a certain point, that kid, like, alright kid, you're old enough to know, don't be grabbing butts. 
Yes. But I don't friggin' do that. Now, you would think in a situation like this, maybe we should leave it to, they might have thought at the time, maybe we should leave this to the male role model to discipline him. No. There's, he's no, not gonna, there's no discipline. He takes the boy out at night to Shinjuku. Most likely to Kabukicho. Most yeah. likely to Kabukicho. They go to a, a nightclub. I don't know why the nightclub let a 12-year-old boy in in the first place. They both got their shirts they off. They both took their shirts off and started dancing around up on stage. And everybody in the club is like, oh my god, this kid is adorable and hilarious. Oh, this kid's a riot. Check this guy out. Ryo's knocking back beers. At least they knew well enough to only give the kid cola. <laughs> yeah, they, they just pour out this bottle of Coke for him. And so they're about to con pie with each other to give each other cheers. And that's... That's when Kaori shows up like, hey, why what the you, hell are you doing? Why are you guys at? Well, Kaori and Atsuko. Yes, they're both there to chastise them as well they should. Because, hey, there's a reason why we're hiding out, bro. And it's because the Schwarzenegger looking guy might come out here looking for you. Rio's like, nah, there's nobody here except for old dudes. Hey, right, old dude? Old dude is Schwarzenegger guy. Well, damn. And thankfully at this point, the animation changes to show off Schwarzenegger guy. It very blatantly shows Schwarzenegger in full gear in the movie Commando. Oh, it clearly looks like Like, just... it's him in the fatigues and the vest with the over-the-shoulder rocket launcher. Yeah, it clearly just looks like it's him in Commando. The entire bar legitimately believes it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Because this guy's towering over everybody by at least a good foot something like that and uh, the subtitles say do, oh do i look that much like arnie and uh i took that moment to really listen carefully because i specifically remembered a long time ago years ago i had listened to a podcast where they were like we're gonna teach you how the japanese pronounce the different names of different really famous actors that you might be aware of different celebrities uh, different actors and celebrities and stuff and one of them was arnold schwarzenegger and they said well that's a really hard name for Japanese to pronounce. So what a lot of people do is call him Swachan. Yes. <laughs> so in this episode, they didn't call him Swachan, because this is a big guy who probably would not call him Chan, right? But he did call him Swa. Yes. A and I was like, okay, they did, they did that thing where they gave him like a nickname. Yes. So, so Arnold Schwarzenegger, for all of you listening, uh, in Japanese is Swa or Swachan. Swachan. <laughs> it's adorable. So, it's adorable. So at that very moment, all of the hostesses there at the bar are crowding him like, oh my god, is it really you? Is it really you? Oh, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, do I really look like him? And that's enough for Ryo, Takuya, and everybody in tow to give him the slip, run out into the alley only to be met by Charles Bronson guy to start shooting at. Now, what's great about this to show really the bond between a man and the kid he's taking care of, he's like, all right, Unfortunately, Atsuko has twisted her ankle. Boy, I need you to take the gun. He didn't give the gun to the kid. He told... No, he, he gave the gun to the kid. He says, I need you to watch my back and shoot. Kaori okay. takes the gun from him. That's right, because I was like, well, Kaori's the one that ends up shooting. You're right. He tries to give it to the kid first, and then Kaori takes it away. As she's shooting, she misses everything, but she manages to hit the Sunrise Beer crates. Yes. <laughs> I love how... You're going to see this over and over again, and I think we've seen it a couple of times already, that Sunrise, the animation studio loved to insert their own name on everything throughout this series. But it also begins a trend that we see a lot with Kaori specifically when she is given a firearm to use and does use it. A lot of the time she misses her target but hits something else kind of in an accidental trick shot manner that makes her think she might be good with a gun. Well, uh, she at the very least fires so erratically that even if she misses everything, it's freaking terrifying. Yes. Uh, you're running around like, oh my god, a stray bullet might hit me. This is terrifying. So after Cowdy has knocked the two other guys out long enough for them to get to the getaway car, the Mini, we see that the Mini is actually really small it compared looks to really, everybody else. And I know it's a Mini Cooper, okay? Mini Coopers are not large vehicles. Like, we've been in a Mini Cooper. There's not a lot of room. There's there's really not a lot of room. But so, that having been said, this, it just looks so comical to watch four people, one of three them. Three adults. Three adults and the one child that's really like not 
too small. He's kind of a half-grown child. Yeah. They look way too big for this car. They really look like there's too much people for a Mini Cooper. So they're trying to get away in the Mini and Rio exclaims, oh no, there's a cyborg in the middle of the road. So there's Schwarzenegger again and with very good precision takes out the headlight and the tire on the driver's side to slow him down. Now Rio finally trusts Cowardy with the gun. Tells, all right, I got a plan. When I say to aim for his head, go for the face. Yeah, but he also knows when he says aim for the face, aim between the eyes specifically is what he says. He knows when he says that she's never actually going to hit him in between the eyes because she's not that good a shot. But actually she did pretty well. She she did knock his glasses off. That was pretty good. Which but is but enough- she, she had to shoot through the windshield to do it though. So well, Rio knew she was going to have to do that. Uh, on top of that, remember that we have decided that Rio just has Mini Coopers lying around somewhere. Yes. He knows he's going to have to get an entirely new Mini Cooper again. What is he on like his third one now? At least after we, this one. Have we not been keeping track? This is the third one. This is the third one because he ruined the one in the first episode. He's been on this one and after this episode, he'll be on his third. Okay, okay. If he doesn't just get the windshield, the light, and the tire replaced. Is that really going to be worth it though? Or is he going to get a brand new car? I don't know. Like, it's fixable. Because sometimes they draw the Mini Cooper slightly differently every time. So we need to see if the Mini Cooper is drawn differently because if it is, it's a whole new Mini Cooper. Yes. It's a different model of Mini Cooper. So we see that's enough for Rio and company to get away. Schwarzenegger gets a message on his 1987 smartwatch. I was the one calling it a smartwatch and you were calling it a Dick Tracy watch. Well, it could be because depending on how how you want to look at that, there wasn't a picture on it, right? No, it was a blinking light and then he answered a call and then he could talk into it. Yeah, it could be a Dick Tracy watch. Yeah. It's not like it connected to his phone that he didn't have in his pocket. So Either way, like I guess Amalia has a really good Samsung store? (laughs) I I have my doubts about that. I would believe Apple, actually. I would believe an Apple store. Apple was big in the 80s, okay? Apple from the 80s to the early 90s. Apple and IBM kind of had that marketplace Yeah, but you're saying young Steve Jobs went to Japan and sold a non-existent Apple watch to not Schwarzenegger so that he could try and get these guys kidnapped or what have you. Josh, this episode is about a couple of people from fake land. Amal Yeah, the country of fake land. So running away only bought them so much time. It's the next morning and uh, at least eight guys are out in front of Ryo's apartment and it's a standoff. And Ryo's like, all right, we're going to defend ourselves. Cowdy, I need guns. Lots of guns. Well, specifically a rocket launcher. Cowrie, give me the rocket launcher. I guess that really is the only way to take out an Arnold Schwarzenegger looking guy in the 80s, though. And he makes sure that everybody else is armed up. Everybody's armed to the teeth. Rio's got, you know, the bandolier full of bullets and the bazooka. Cowdy has an Uzi. Atsuko has a shotgun. And Takuya has the handgun he's been practicing with. They're ready to throw down. Like, it's on. Right, and they all came in there and you really think it's gonna be a shootout and then it turns out Schwarzenegger Schwarzenegger guy is like, oh no, I'm literally waving a a white flag. I give up. So we don't actually see like a big old shootout or anything because it turns out, uh, no, 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 come outside. Let's talk about how we're giving up. And actually it turns out that our civil war is over. It ended yesterday. Why it just ended yesterday and we only just got the news. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, hey kid, you want to see your dad? Here's your dad. Here he is. Sorry, sorry for the trouble guys. Whoops. Our bad. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's another fake-out sort of thing. Like, you think the the episode is building up and building up and building up, and you're ready for a shootout. Yeah. Like, this big knockdown, drag-out, shootout, 80s-style action sequence, and it's like, nope, just really blue-balling you on that. (laughs) On top of that, speaking of blue balls, it turns out that Takuya's dad is engaged to Atsuko. Ah, yeah, so he he went and saw his future mother-in-law naked in the bath a few times. I guess he better get it in now before they're actually family. I hope so. they have I hope they have therapy in Amalia. Yeah, yeah, who knows what that's like because for all I know their therapy could be bedeft loe. I don't really know. It's Dobu Moo. It might be Dobu Moo. And, and I don't know if insurance covers that. You probably have to pay a premium for <laughs> Dobu Moo. Like he's just there in therapy. So tell me about your new stepmother and he's just like, "Oh." <laughs> well, I'm going to prescribe you some Heuojule for that. 
I'm I'm gonna need a generic Helgele for that. I my my insurance is only so great. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. And yeah, they kind of just walk off into the sunset. Ryo is left with a pair of panties of Atsuko that Takuya stole, and Schwarzenegger also likes them. <laughs> That was just really, really weird. Really freaking weird. Takuya managed to get one more butt grab in on Kauri before he left. And Kauri was like, she's mad. But she also just kind of has to be like, oh, he's he's a 12-year-old kid and he's leaving. Just just let him go. I hope they take care of him. I, I hope they get him to stop doing that. Yes, that would not, be nice. Not my problem anymore. So, so far, Kauri has gotten attention from Sanchez last week, who thought she was underage. And now this kid, who definitely is underage, she's doing great great poor calorie man poor calorie <laughs> she's she deserves better right now she really really does and i would say I, I just wish they would get to the part where rio would realize his own feelings for her but also it's not like rio is a great dude all the time either. he's got a lot to work through we we need he, we need to put him through some therapy before he's ready to settle down with somebody is yes. what <laughs> is what needs to happen and that'll do it for this week's case we didn't get the shootout we wanted but it was still pretty entertaining uh, oh super entertaining we are uh, we said this like last week but it's finally at the moment the point in time in city hunters anime run where it's kind of become a funny cartoon like there's big old animated funny faces oh there's a ton of funny faces such, in this episode such good funny humorous animation and for the most part it kind of stays this way and it makes you feel less icky about the way that Rio kind of behaves and we'll need that going into next week's episode I do want to give a fair warning for next week's episode because there's a really sensitive topic probably should even mention it now before you even jump into next week's episode the, there is a transgender character in next week's episode and i don't think they do a super good job of talking about her existence and so be warned maybe some people might not feel super great about discussing next week's episode. We're going to do it, and hopefully we're going to do it justice. So we'll definitely cover that for next week, so be warned. Be warned, and uh, maybe follow along with us. And maybe if you are following along with us, maybe we can have a discussion about, well, how was this presented, and how should we be addressing it today? Yes. So please do come back next time when we cover the 13th episode of the TV series, My Foe is a Beautiful Lady, the Biggest Woman Trap in history. And if you want to catch us outside this podcast, you can always find us both over on Twitter. I'm at Josh Knight First. And I'm at Mars Girl. Thank you all so much for listening to our 12th episode of Moko Replay. And if you don't come back next episode, I'm going to drop a potted plant on Josh's head. Wait, what? 